It is definitely giving the Sony a run for its money, yeah, for sure. Hey, howdy guys, welcome to Cameras and Coffee, episode three, and today I'm here talking with... Is this where I come in? Yes, this is when you, this is exactly that time. I'm Jake, and I'm in Nashville. He's in Nashville, Jake I'm Bernal, Nashville. if you don't know, He's uh, literally taking every single one of my jobs that I'm leaving behind. I'm not too he, sorry about it. Yeah, it's, no, it's honestly, it's great. He was the camera op and editor for Kino Tika while Dave was still hosting the channel when I left. And then when I moved away from California, he is now working with Armando. Fiera. Fiera shooting and editing for him. So that's, that's pretty awesome. But uh, today, what we're actually gonna be talking about is the Canon EOS or EOS, sorry, Philip Bloom, R5 one year later. So I have experience when it first came out and Jake. Wait, b before we move on, I'm feeling a little left out with that brown hat gang, so. Oh. Now we can talk. <laughs> the Cranon EOS EOS R5. I'm, and I'm really jealous. It's, it's, um, it's got some flavor. It's got some good flavor. It's got yeah. that that Canon flavor. Yeah. Now, the thing about the R5 when it first came out was that the image looked nice and was comfortable to use, but it was also pretty much unusable because it would overheat in a solid 20 minutes of using it. So Jake, now that you've had the camera for, how long have you had the EOS R5 now? I think now I've had it for about four or five months. Okay. And right before it, I was actually shooting on this type of thingy, the mm. Fujifilm X-T4. I was a really big Fujifilm fanboy Yeah. for like the longest time. And um, there's something about the color science that I loved. It was actually Dave that convinced me way back when, when I was shooting on two Fujifilm X-T3s, I was yeah. like, dude, the, like Fujifilm's like, their color science is amazing. It's super close to Canon. Mm -hmm. And he went, if it's close to Canon, why, why don't you just get a Canon? And I was like, fair enough. Oh. Fair, yeah, fair enough. So I, I sold the X-T3s and I bought a Canon EOS R. Right. Which I then convinced you to buy right. sometime later. Uh, yeah. And I love the Canon EOS R for the time. It had some weird quirks that were annoying, but like overall, it I was actually okay with shooting 1080p on that camera because it was a really clean 1080p. 4K was also, of course, really, really nice, but then you ended up with, I think it was a 1.8X crop. Not fun. Yeah, not fun. So, of course, with the Canon EOS R5, you don't have to worry about that. It is a true full frame camera. You don't yeah. have to worry about any of the crop factors, but it did have a glaring issue. If you wanted to use any of the higher end, higher resolution modes like 8K RAW, 4K HQ, and to some extent, even regular 4K, it would overheat. And has that issue been resolved now? Like, I feel like hmm. there's been a lot of updates. Have you ever had at all the R5 overheat on you? I'm gonna be honest with you. So I used, I started off shooting weddings as most of us did. Yeah. And uh, now I shoot on productions and it's usually long, hot days. Like you've been there. Mm -hmm. One of those good old Moai film production shoots. Yeah. It gets hot and it gets long and it gets grueling. And to be honest, I've never even seen the temperature gauge or the- Oh, it's not even pop. a warning. I've never gotten a warning. And um, you know, I shoot music videos. I've been shooting a lot of artists, stuff like that. And yeah. those shoots, they tend to go for hours. And sometimes you're just waiting there with your camera on. I never turn it off because I pretty much never run out of battery. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've never seen the overheating warning pop up and it's, something I'm thankful for. And yep. unfortunately, okay. when I had the X-T4, I was shooting something in a controlled environment in a tattoo shop mm -hmm. and shooting for like maybe 45 minutes mm -hmm. and I got the overheating and I had to keep turning off the camera. And Interesting. That is something I was worried about with this camera sure. moving forward. It was between this and the Sony a7S III. Right. And uh, I just chose this because I'm, you know, I. I like to dip my hand in photography and sure. videography and there's something about that 45 megapixel sensor that just rings a bell in my ear. Right. So um, yeah, I really haven't had any overheating issues at all. That's fantastic. I do know that the last time I personally used the camera was hmm, maybe six, seven months ago, something like that. Yeah. And they had come up with a handful of updates and it didn't overheat, but it would constantly warn us. It's like, hey, this could overheat at any second. Yeah. You know, five minutes, it's all you get, but then it would just keep recording, keep recording, it'd be fine. So it's nice to see that not even the warning comes up. I think that with that issue gone, is this 
what do you think of this camera package as a whole? Because you got the 45 megapixel sensor, yeah. so you're able to take some really meaty photos, but you still have the ability to shoot raw, although I don't know that you are. I don't feel like many people who have the Canon R5 are, yeah. but you got 4K HQ as yeah. well. That's true. Uh, to be honest, it's been like a dream. Like I, yeah. I love this thing. There are very few downsides to having this camera, mm -hmm. especially after the firmware updates where that overheating is pretty much not an issue, at least in my experience. Right. Uh, one of them is just cost overall. Sure. Because to really get the full functionality of this camera, okay. you're kind of going to want the RF lenses. And right sure. now I have this 24 to 70 and I have the 70 to 200 RF lenses and they pair Fantastically. Yeah, you got the eight stops of stabilization between these lenses and the camera body itself. And it is, as far as my testing went, I'm sure yours as well, it's potentially the smoothest mirrorless IBIS out there. The Sony a7S III, mind you though, is phenomenal. So it would be like a really interesting head to head between those two. It is definitely giving the Sony a run for its money. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, and you know, I, I went as far as to buy a gimbal that will be compatible with the weight of this camera. And I've probably used it once because mm. there's something about one going handheld. There's nothing beats feeling like you're doing something. There's something about a gimbal that makes me feel almost disconnected from the camera. Sure. Um, but really when I need you know, like stable shots, I honestly just turn on IBIS mm -hmm. and it's wonderful. Like it's, it's beautiful. And, um, I think the only time that I did use that gimbal is when I needed one of those, like turning those camera shots. Like, oh, like that, like, uh, what do they call that? Inception what, shot? Yeah. Like an inception swirly, dirly thing. T t turning a spinny shot. A spinny shot. Yeah. And, um, I got the shot and then I don't even think I ended up using it in the music video. I think we, I went all handheld the entire mm. time. But you were talking about the cost. So like break down for me, the individual cost of like everything that's just here. This isn't everything you have. You have other, another lens, another RF lens, yeah. but just here and what you're holding, how much, how much are we talking? The body itself is about $3,900. So you're sure. probably going to be spending about 42 after tax Sure. and all that good stuff. Okay. I sprung for the battery grip because like I said, I, pretty much do photography and videography equal. So okay. I'm shooting as much photo as I do video. And um, there's something about this beefcake, especially with this, that just gives it that like, like feel yeah. that it'll, it'll handle anything. I it's, love the Canon US R with the battery grip for yeah. the same exact reason. It's lovely. It's lovely. So that was about 350. And then these lovely little batteries that Canon came out with, with that little little thingy on it, the little, little sticker, the Canon badge. Yeah, those things. Um, Pretty expensive as well. I think they're about sixty-five bucks. A, a they could be right. like seventy. Okay. And this twenty-four to seventy lens, which I love, it's honestly mm -hmm. probably one of my go-to's, if not the seventy to two hundred. Okay. Um, it's about twenty-three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So after the two batteries, the battery grip, the body, and the lens, you're looking at about sixty-seven hundred dollars out of pocket, and that's before tax. So that's something you want to keep in mind. Right. But something that I don't know if it's been highlighted too too much when okay. it comes to this camera sure a hidden cost that some people really don't think about yeah. to really fully unlock the full functionality of this camera 100 percent need in it's my necessary opinion. yeah is the c fast express type b cards and those mm -hmm. things will give you a run for the money yeah I think there are times where i'm like okay there's this 512 card yeah but then there's all these other things that i can buy for 500 dollars. Right. you know um so those things don't come cheap, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes to shooting high frame rates or 8K or raw footage, you're yeah. really gonna wanna use one of those. But a 128 CFast Express Type B card, which is, I guess about 200 bucks, right. gets you about six minutes of 8K raw footage. Right, so, so. It's, you really almost have to spend on those 512s. And if you buy two of them, you're looking at an extra grand. So now we're up to $7,700 before tax. With tax, you're probably going to spend a little over eight. It's not a cheap package. So by no means would I consider the US R5 an intermediate. This is a professional rig right here. It's a beautiful camera system, one that I hope to get. But let's talk a little bit Fuji. You know, let's break away from Canon. I okay. have to do it. Uh, I have to as well. Fully, yeah. The R5 is going to be... I will have you. Or the R3. Here you go. Thank you. Now give it back. Okay. I need to work. <laughs> <laughs> but what is like that Fujifilm camera? Because I feel like you and I both agree. It's like you can have your workhorse camera, whether that's your Sony A7S III or your Canon EOS R5 or R6 or whatever. But what's that Fujifilm pairing 
that you had to have with this camera? Right away, like right off the bat, I can tell you that for all of my professional work, which you can see right there. Yeah, great, now I have to add that. Yeah, I'll send you some. <laughs> Thank you for that. I use the EOS R5, 100% without a doubt, if I'm doing a paid gig mm -hmm. or I'm shooting an artist yeah. or anything of that sort, it's gonna be this camera. But more than half the time on those shoots, now that I have one again, I grab this. The yep. Fujifilm X100V, this is the, honestly, the perfect grab and go camera. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't love it anymore. About a year ago now, I bought this and I had some fun with it, but I really never unlocked its full potential because I had the X-T4 and I used that as like a fallback. I was like, you know what? Same sensor, same image quality. Mm -hmm. Why do I need this? I ended up selling it. Especially because you can't change out the lenses, which the X-T4 has. So that's probably another reason you left this one behind more often than not, right? Exactly. Yeah. So I kind of got rid of this camera originally because I fell back on the X-T4 and I thought, same thing, what's the point? But as soon as I fell into the Canon ecosystem, I missed and craved that Fujifilm look. That Fuji right juice, that some would Fuji say. Fuji juice. Go check out, link in the description for Zach Mayfield's hats. Yes, They're sir. They're great. I, I have one myself. I do too. Sorry, Zach, I didn't bring I, it to I'm not show. wearing it. Yeah, this is a bad ad. <laughs> the Fujifilm X100V definitely caved into my craving for that Fujifilm look. Mm -hmm. I couldn't be happier with this. And honestly, uh, the first time I had it, I was a little peeved with the fixed lens, mm -hmm. but then just not having the camera, it made me think about it mm -hmm. more and more. And you know, having a fixed lens camera like this makes you think about your composition, makes you think about your shot a lot more. And sometimes you come out with more artistic shots. And yeah. when I'm doing street photography, like we did on Broadway, downtown Nashville yesterday, this is such a not intimidating camera yeah. to have in front. If I go up to somebody banging a drum on the street and I'm like, can I take a picture of you? They're like, People he, think you're shooting for like a magazine or a vlog and that or can a newspaper, be- newspaper, who knows? Yeah, and that's very daunting to people, especially in street photography. But if you whip this out, most people think it's a disposable or a little film camera. Right. And they don't think twice about it. No, okay. not at all. In fact, um, if you missed out on the last one, which I, you know, if you're watching this, I, I hope you saw the other one. We talked to Cam Mackey and he also shoots with the X100V. I love this camera. I, honestly, I do think that Either the Canon or the Sony a7S III plus this camera is like the perfect hybrid shooter's dream setup. I don't yes. know that it gets better than this. Of course, I do love the Fujifilm X-T4. We are shooting on it right now. I always love the Fujifilm X-T4, but one day whenever I do make the jump to either the R5 or maybe even the R3, something along those lines, yeah. I will potentially sell my X-T4 and snag this camera. I highly recommend it because as you can see in these two photos here, side by side comparison, there's just something about that Fujifilm look. I do love Canon and it mm. does give you that professional quality. It's like a clean editorial look. It's great, yeah. but that Fujifilm look is fantastic and I don't think that you can really beat it. Yeah, it's great. Okay, so let's just go ahead and, I don't know why I just feel like this is necessary to do. What are we gonna rate the Canon R5 one year later. Is it the perfect camera? Is it near perfect? Are there enough flaws that you're gonna rate it low? How would you rate this camera one year later? If you are a professional photographer, mm -hmm. this is a great camera. This is probably one of, if not Canon's best options right now for right professional now. photography. Mm -hmm. If you're only professional videography, I probably wouldn't recommend this camera. Oh, real? There's a big need to build out mm -hmm. and put a cage on this thing. And okay. you, you don't want to show up to a shoot for video just yeah. rocking this body. Yeah. One, it doesn't fully look professional, which is unfortunately important these days. Okay. And two, you don't really get to reach all the functionality, you know, yeah. like those underslung shots or something crazy, the battery life. I mean, on a long video shoot, these batteries will die, which yeah. is why I use Anton Bauer batteries. So if you're a videographer and you want to go Canon, I would recommend looking at the C70 sure. or the C500, C200. But if you're a hybrid shooter like myself, both video and photo, this thing is going to knock your socks off. Well, Jake, thank you so much for coming on episode three of Cameras and Coffee. I really appreciate it. Go ahead and like shout out all your socials, tell all the people, however many people are watching this, love to all you guys, uh, what you're up to right now. If you want to check me out on Instagram, that's at JM Burnicle right there. Check it out. I'll follow you back. 
Let's say what's up. Okay. Why not, right? Yeah. Uh, if you want to check out some of my photography, that's at JM Vertical 2. It's pretty simple. I, yeah. I didn't, I'm not very creative in that sense when it comes to naming. You are. Uh, and if you guys want to check out, I just started for fun a vlog. Okay. And uh, if you're familiar with names like Dirty Dom or Steve-O or people like that, you might be surprised at what you see in that vlog. So it'd be pretty cool. First episode is coming out a few weeks from now. Okay. So this video, I, I'll I'll leave it in the description once your video goes live because this should come out before your video. But either way, definitely go check out all of Jake's stuff. He also works for Armando. So if you're watching Armando's work, you'll see some of his work trickled in there. Yeah. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for joining us on this episode of Cameras and Coffee, and I will see you guys whenever I make another video. Never. Take it easy, guys. <laughs> Do you think people will notice that I'm just putting a Starbucks cup? I mean, I like flash the camera. Yeah, so no, like, I, I noticed. Can you like put fake steam so it looks like all piping hot with my iced coffee? Yeah, I'm not going to do that.